Number nine. What does it you give the quadratic? It tells you the discriminant of it straight away. The discriminant's 23. Here's two statements, right? It's a multiple selection. So that means I have to decide which of these are true and which are false and so on. Right, for the first one. Well, if that's the discriminant, remember the discriminant comes from the content of the square root. That's the crucial part. That discriminant's this part in here. In other words, that part comes to 23. That tells you whether or not you've got answers and whether or not they're nice answers or nasty answers. Nice being rational if it's a perfect square because then the square root's gone and it's whole numbers over whole numbers. And nasty, irrational, if it's not a perfect square. So that's more or less the answer to this. So the first part is, one, the roots are real. Yes, you can get the square root of 23. So that means, yes, the roots are real. Second part, the roots are rational. They'll only be rational if that's a perfect square. 23 is not a perfect square, you're left with a third, so the roots are rational, no. And then you look for the selection that says one only, which is B. And there it is. Number 10. Solve this equation here for x between 0 and 2 pi, but not including 2 pi, so it's in radians. So I've got some exact values and the answers are radians. Well, the first thing is, what have you actually got? Take the 2 cross and divide and you've got root 3 open 2. You should recognise that from one of the triangles that you should know. The 1, 2, root 3 triangle. The cosine is adjacent to the angle. So this is the angle you're looking for, which is the smaller one, which is 30, or pi upon 6. So that's one of the answers. Now the way you could figure out both answers is either by using the cast diagram or thinking of the graph. The graph of the cosine looks like this. So if you've got one answer here for root 3 upon 2, the other one's going to be the opposite end, the same distance back from 2 pi. So the answer is going to be you've either got pi upon 6 or 2 pi minus pi upon 6. Pi upon 6 or and 2 pi, change them into 6s would be 12, take away the 1, or 11 pi upon 6. You can either do that or use the analogue diagram, all sine tan cos, which means if you've got a positive cosine, you're either in the first quadrant or in the fourth quadrant, so those angles there would be pi upon 6. So you've either got pi upon 6, or the same thing again, 2 pi minus it, which is 12 pi upon 6 minus it. And that answer is going to come to... Pi upon 6, 11 pi upon 6, D. Eleven here. Evaluate this indefinite integral, and it's already in a suitable form. Separate terms with the x's on top in index form, that's fine. Don't be put off by this little x is greater than zero at the side. That's just a little disclaimer, which isn't going to affect what you do really. That's just there because if you've got a square root, x couldn't be negative, it could be zero. And if you've got a reciprocal, which is what this means, one over x cubed, x couldn't be zero. So that's why it says x has to be strictly positive, not zero or negative. It doesn't affect what you're doing though. Because what you're doing is simply adding one to the power, up to three up and two. Divide by the power, but rather than divide by a fraction, divide by 3 upon 2, multiply by the reciprocal, so times 2 thirds. Same with this one, add 1 to the power, up to negative 2, divide by that power, so a bit negative, divide by 2, so it's negative a half times it, plus c. Tidy that up a bit, you've got 8 upon 3, x to the 3 upon 2, minus a half of x to the negative 2, plus c. Then you just check to see which one that is. 8 upon 3, there's a couple of them. 3 upon 2, they're both there. Minus a half, so it's this one, D. Number 12. There's a diagram with two right angled triangles. Two angles touching, so you've got the sum of the two of them. And that's what it asks. What's the sign of the sum of these two angles? Well, that just means you need to split them apart because you know the values for the individual angles. So that would be the addition formula. Sin P cos Q plus cos P sin Q. And then just carefully pick out the bits and pieces. Sin P means opposite P. So that's 2 over its hypotenuse, root 5. Cos Q means next to Q. So that would be the root 5. 
and its hypotenuse for Q opposite its right angle is 3, so times root 5 upon 3, plus cos P, so that's adjacent to P, so that's 1, so it's 1 over root 5. Sine Q means opposite to Q, so that would be the 2 over the 3. Now, you could do some cancelling here. Normally you would add that to a single fraction, but looking at the answers, they've kept them separate, so they are doing the cancelling down part of it. So those parts would go, leaving you with 2 thirds plus, and then multiplying the numerators and denominators, 2 over 3 root 5, rather than doing what you normally would have done, which is just put them together over 3 root 5. That's C.